Scary video games are the latest craze to sweep the country and most of the world, too. Millions of people are addicted to hours of gazing at electronic images on game screens and arcades and in their own homes. What makes video games so popular? Well, Tony, in the arcades, video games were so popular because of the superior graphics, the superior sound, and probably most of all, the superior controls. Through the 80s into the 90s, the arcades represented the very pinnacle of gaming. Then with the release of the Mega Drive, arcade quality ports started to appear in the home, duplicating the graphics and sound as best as possible given the home hardware. But part of the experience was missing, the arcade controller. With the massive popularity of games such as Street Fighter 2, it wasn't long before the home arcade controller arrived in stores. If you owned a Mega Drive, SNES or even a PlayStation, you could complete that home arcade experience. One system that was left out though was our favourite here in CRG and that is the Amiga. While most early Amiga games only made use of one or two buttons, the CD32 has up to six available, and games like Fighting Spirit made good use of this ability, but regardless, we were stuck using a joypad. So in this new video series, we are going to put that right. We are going to design and build our very own custom two-player arcade controller. In part one today, we're going to take a look at the hardware we'll be using to create this controller and we're going to finish up the design of the case that I've been working on. So this is the hardware we're going to be using and yes this is a trackball, but more on that later. To make the joysticks work and the buttons work we need this. This is from KM Tech, CD32 arcade controller board, AMI Arcade 32. This is essentially a CD32 controller and we can wire up our own buttons and our own joystick and then our cable out. It comes in kit form, this is the board, this is a bag of goodies. So we will be putting this together but uh, not to the next video. And we need two of these, one for player one, one for player two. And that then is where this comes in. Because we're doing this custom, I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool to stick a trackball in between player one and player two, the act as the mouse. But in doing that, it does introduce another problem. How are we going to switch between mouse and joystick? Well. KM Tech to the rescue again with this very nice wee device. This one is sold uh, pre built as I have it here. Essentially, this end plugs into your Amiga. On this end here, you can plug in your mouse and your joystick. Click a button on the mouse, and that channel becomes active. Click a button on the joystick, that channel becomes active. So, hopefully, that will work fine alongside this, I don't see why I wouldn't, and this. And that is effectively all the hardware we need. Well, apart from these bits, nice clicky joystick, nice clicky button. And those have been stripped out of this. I recently picked up this uh, old X Arcade two player stick. This thing's faulty, but the fault is not in the buttons, the fault is in the Wii controller board on here. So we're going to harvest all the buttons out of this. We need six and a joystick for each uh, CD32 controller. So that gives us a couple left over, just in case any of these would be faulty. And all the wee micro switches on everything, including this, is the same and it's all interchangeable. So we're going to continue stripping this down. 
here's some of the wiring that we're hopefully going to be able to recover as well which will be excellent so this comes apart really easily buttons just unscrew you can unclip the actual switch that's it there and you just unscrew the back of the button and the button comes out now all of that's no good unless we have a box to put it in and this thing we need to open this up and see what how we're going to be able to integrate this into said box so let's see what we have four screws in the bottom of this i'm really hoping this is going to be quite simple inside and we can integrate it into our controller Right, let's see what we got. And yes, happy days. It is quite simple. It is effectively just a big upside down mouse. This bit here works exactly the same way. And if that is new old stock, well, I don't know. There's an awful lot of dust on it for new old stock. Well, whatever. As long as it works. So what we need to do is just integrate this board into the arcade stick but obviously the ball needs to sit proud of the top so that we can maneuver it right let's get this out and we'll get onto the computer we'll boot up autocad and we'll see about how we're going to integrate this into our design Okay, so here we are on the PC, and we're using NanoCAD here. I know I said AutoCAD, but uh, I use NanoCAD at home because it's free. So this is the design as it currently sits. Here's player one, player two, and this area will be for the trackball. This hashed out area here represents the size of the housing for the joystick, and that's gonna be rooted out slightly underneath, and I'll show you that in a second. The layout of these buttons is sort of in the classic Japanese Sega arcade controller style. So we've got two of those. We're going to have the trackball through here. And then the two buttons left and right laid out exactly the same as these two. So what we need to do though is just be 100% sure that what I have here, this is a 40 millimeter diameter circle cutout, which is the same as the ball, so that should be okay. But what we need to be 100% sure of is that the circuit board that's going to go in here underneath will fit without getting in the way of these buttons. So I'm just going to draw that up quickly. Okay, so what have we been doing? Well, this outer line here, this represents roughly the full size of the circuit board from inside the trackball. This inner circle here represents the cutout that's in the trackball circuit board at the minute. This 40 diameter circle here represents the size of the ball. So what we're gonna get the CNC machine to do is to root out this section here and to cut through 
this 40. So the this sheet at the top is 12 mil thick. So what I'm going to get it to do is cut out 7 mil depth on this bit to leave 5 mil thickness in the MDF. And this 40 mil here will be cut out fully. This section here, 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 and here, those will be left at the 12 mil depth, the full depth. And then the board will screw up onto the MDF in these points here. I'm glad to see that the buttons here will not interfere with the circuit board. So, last thing to do is just to hatch this area that we are going to cut out. There we are. So that is the bit that the machine is going to root out, 7mm, and that is the bit that is going to be cut right through. I need to take the rest of that off this, so it doesn't confuse the machine when it's cutting. There we are. And I'll just show you over here quickly. I'll finish this later. And this is the actual bit that goes for manufacture. So as you can see, it is 750 mil total length. It's going to be 235 depth, just to give plenty of room here for you to rest your hands when you're working it. So that's going to be the top, and that's viewed from the underside. That's why it looks like that. There's the front, the rear, the two sides, and the bottom. There's a section through it there, just through the buttons just to make sure that we have space underneath the buttons. This is where the AMI arcade boards are gonna go. So we'll need to leave plenty of length on the wires when we are putting this together. But it shouldn't be an issue. So yeah, that's the design, more or less finished. I just need to tidy up this wee bit here, and then we can get this sent off for cutting. Right, so as we were looking at on the computer there, we're gonna get the CNC machine to basically cut out all of this except for these four holes through which we're going to screw this up onto the wood to hold it in place. We're going to remove this switch and we will just hardwire it for Amiga. We don't need to change between Amiga and Atari. We're going to remove these switches and we'll just wire. We're not going to worry about button three. We're going to wire our arcade buttons off left and right, just off the pods underneath. We'll remove this capacitor, put it underneath, and we'll remove this cable connector, and we'll just hardwire the cable on here at these points. Certainly seems straightforward. I can only hope it works out as easy. Well. That's pretty much all there is for today then. I just wanted to show you the planning that's going into this. I will finish up the CAD drawings and we will send them off to be manufactured. It might take a couple of weeks now, just depending on how much stuff the company I'm using has on. I don't know if I'll get it back in time for next weekend. Hopefully we will, but if not, we'll pick this up again the weekend after. So in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that like button as it really helps the channel. Please subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next part of this arcade controller build. And I'll see you next time.